brothers wiss. The brothers wiss, brothers wiss. The brothers wiss. The brothers. You're West. now listening to Greg, it's the Brothers Wisp, let's take Hey everybody, this is Greg this Soul, ship. the Brothers Wisp number 127. Today, it is, uh, what is it, January 2nd, 2021, so we're uh, officially in the new year and we've got a familiar face. We only get him once a year, so let's enjoy it while we can. <laughs> we've got Andrew Just Cox. Scrolled out I got the back point. end of 2020. Uh, there he is, Andrew Cox right there, all the way from Australia. Say hi to the folks. Hey guys. <laughs> and then we also have Mikey Hammett from Chicagoland down there. Uh, I was trying to think of something else to say other than my normal, hey, how's it going? Um, hey, how's it going? <laughs> and I couldn't, so that's all well, I have. There it's it just is. That I was trying to think of something else. <laughs> I knew you'd work it in one way or the other. There we are. All right. So uh, this go around, we have a couple of new patrons. We've got. All right, we uh, we googled this, so it should be right. Uh, Audrius uh, Pechukas, Pechukas, Pechukas. I think Andrew Cox, back me up. <laughs> Give it a go. Pe- Pechukas. Yeah, Pechukas. I'm gonna go with that. Pechukas. All right, excellent. And then we also have Jordan Fox. And when we say patrons, that's patreoncom forward slash the Brothers Wisp. These guys were nice enough to support us, and then they get access to the patron only Slack. So uh, I think I think Audrius has already been in there uh, talking away. I'm not sure that we've seen too much out of Jordan. I think Jordan popped in last night, maybe. So uh, I don't know that he's actually signed in just yet. But hopefully we'll see him or her. I don't want to engender them, right? Jordan can go either direction. Uh, so hopefully we'll see them soon. So we also have some sponsors. And as Andrew may or may not know, he gets to read one of them. What would you like, Andrew? Take a look, take a look at the doc. <laughs> take your pick. I'm going to do the Cambium one because I see that at the top. Where it's the Cambium EPMP bundle. What better than uh, starting the new year with some new kit out on your tower? $6,000 value. You get it for two grand. You get six months of this.net billing. You also get some RF elements. Twist horn there. I would say the new hotness, but they've been the hotness for a while. So they are just the hotness, neither new nor old. You also get two hours of one on one with an EPMP network engineer. No sales pitch. You just ask him questions and he answers them. So, uh, 20 questions he has to try and, or I guess you have to try and figure out, you know, what his uh, favorite color is or maybe what animal he's thinking of. You know, I mean, it could go either way. You also, 20 can questions. In... What's, what's the, what's the lotto number for the next, uh, next draw? <laughs> <laughs> you got it wrong. I get another question. <laughs> <laughs> no, first you ask him, uh, what was your mother's maiden name? Uh, what was your first <laughs> pet? <laughs> what's your preferred password? <laughs> what are the last four digits of your social security number? Uh, yeah, all those good things. So uh, be sure to check out the Cambium bundle. We'll have a uh, link in the show notes for it. All right, Andrew Cox, what are you going to read? Um, I was uh, interested in the the quick bit. Is that uh, is that in the list here? Yeah. Or am I reading the wrong a, one? No, it's like uh, line number seven. What do you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So QuickBit is a indoor and outdoor 60 gigahertz kit. Uh, we've seen seen a few few different vendors coming out with 60 gigahertz kit, but this is designed to be super simple, just basically plug and play. Um, it's got an API, it's got deployment tools, and eight clients per hub, which which is sort of the the uh, what everyone's going for with the point to multi point stuff. And it looks uh, looks pretty rugged and, and durable, so. Uh, ah, and um, I noticed it's got uh, some smart building IoT connectivity stuff they're talking about, or the that's the one of the use cases they want you to be connecting in bits and pieces there. So I know, uh, I know there's been some some LoRa discussions I've seen popping up all over the place with people nowadays. So if you're getting into that, um, this would be worthwhile checking out. Yeah, for sure, and that's kwikbit.com, quickbit.com. All right, Mikey, which one are you pick it up? Well, last time I. I took the short one. You yelled at me. Um, <laughs> no, you just you suckered out. That was all. It uh, so uh, given that uh, um, I uh, given that I will take the the slightly longer one uh, this one time, and then I will revert back to taking the <laughs> shortest way out in the future. Um, I recommend that uh, maybe you should make all of our patreons come on and do one of these introductions. (laughs) 
Um, tower coverage is your RF, RF propagation system to empower your network. Real-time data metrics enable your coverage area, reaching your customer base, and more. The industry's best RF propagation mapping system allows website integration for customer sign-up and pre-qualification. Use this data to scientifically plan network expansion and help your WISP, WISP succeed. Get a free trial today at TowerCoverage.com. Excellent. Nicely done, sir. Yeah, it, uh, it actually, I see Tower Coverage uh, quite often as I'm doing uh, uh, research on operators. Um, and I'm trying to figure out where they cover and things like that. Uh, I... I often get stimmy that they have tower coverage. It's like, I don't want to fill out a form letting them know that I'm trying to figure out stuff about them. So uh, it's great for a potential customer, bad for other people trying to find out about you. <laughs> 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 Which right. is probably, probably desired. The last sponsor we have is our oldest and most lawyer at Sonar. And that's Sonar. Ooh, we're going to sing it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I missed the Christmas episode, so. Ah. To you by Sona. <laughs> Scalable, intuitive, comprehensive ISP billing and operational support system. For uh, a trial, you can go to sonar.software. I think if you want additional uh, verses to that uh, intro song, you're going to have to go straight to Andrew's uh, OnlyFans site. That's Sona, 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 Sona.software. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, the show notes are pretty slim, but we've got an Australian that I haven't talked to in a really long time, so I'm assuming we'll have a lot to speak about. Uh, I was talking about my Christmas presents last go around on the Christmas episode, as it went, and I was getting this Sure SM7B mic, and I got it in, and I was excited to play with it, and I did this side-by-side -side test where I recorded on this MXL990, which you see I am still currently using, as well as that Sure microphone, and there was almost no difference i think it's really designed to be like a broadcast mic so if you have like multiple people in a room you know and you can't get a, a huge amount of distance i mean obviously you want three meters of distance at this point but uh, if you can't get more than that uh, you know it's probably a good microphone because you have to really speak right into the end of it right the broadcast mic um, i did notice my plosives were a little bit better but it was almost i mean it was it was the difference was negligible you really couldn't tell the difference and so the mxl 990 is a $70 microphone and the Shure microphone is a $400 one. So I promptly returned the Shure microphone and just <laughs> stick it with the same old kit. But there's no like, like well, I don't buy have yourself friends. Instead. Yeah, I don't have friends, so I can't like borrow stuff off of them. I don't know anybody <laughs> that had one to, to ask, hey, can I play with your thing? And it's, it's not like they have a ton of them sitting around, just, you know, they're not using. So the odds of me getting a spare one off of somebody was pretty low. So I got it, I tried it wasn't for me audio quality was was just fine um just for the price i couldn't I couldn't justify it and i don't i don't do obviously i don't do this stuff in person and i don't foresee in the future being able to do this stuff in person so i'm good here not for a while <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a minute oh my goodness all right so that was my oh yeah yeah what else did i get i got um the samsung ear beans you know it's like their version of the ear pods or whatever they just look like little kidney beans that you stick in your ears, and they're actually pretty nice. I've really, uh, I've been enjoying them a lot. I've been, uh, I ride the exercise bike in the garage with them on. They've got like noise canceling that kind of like freaks my brain out for a second right when I turn it on, and uh, I played pickleball in it, so I've sweated in them a lot. They work pretty well. I don't know, I haven't had any problems. And my ears are so huge that uh, it's not like they're gonna fall out or anything, so I have no problems there. What, uh, what about you, Andrew? What'd you get for Christmas? Um. Uh, I can't think of anything anything sort of interesting to this area, but uh, I got um I got Settlers of Catan, the board game, and a couple oh, yeah. of like board game like type escape room things. So ones that you can play at home, uh, which we're probably going to go back in the lockdown soon, so it'll be useful. <laughs> <laughs> Have they started um, doing the vaccinations over there yet? Uh, I. Th don't think they've started here just yet. Um, I know that they're like we we've still got a bunch of cases and stuff um, that have just started up again, so they're trying to clamp down on the spread of those. But I don't think we've started vaccinations as far as I'm aware. Um, they're testing like 
thousands and thousands of people each day at the moment, though, just to try and stop it from spreading across all the states again. So, yeah. Yeah, I've noticed some of the folks. Uh, I know a couple of people that have gotten the first round, and then Chad in the the chat, he's a um, volunteer firefighter, and he's gotten his first round. What did he say? It went in like molasses? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, it's it's bad if it's like I think it's kept cold. So I've I've had yeah. those injections before. Where it's like cold, and you can feel it. Like it's <laughs> weird. It's like uh, when Neo in the Matrix touched the mirror. And starts. <laughs> it's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> starts taking him over. Well, Mikey, what did you uh, what did you get for Christmas? Or did you give something particularly interesting? It uh, well, so I actually already had it when we did the last episode, but. Uh, I got a shark um, Wi-Fi enabled robot vacuum. Hey, that's right, your vacuum. How's it working? Um, I haven't gotten mad at it yet, um, so that's good. Um, our Sucked previous up one, the I... cat or the dog? <laughs> no, no. Actually, it's uh, it's only had problems a couple times when it's you know sucked up some piece of clothing or whatever that you, you know, got to pull out of it. But uh, you know it. Every now and then, it'll get stuck on something. Um, but, uh, I mean, my last vacuum would get stuck every time it went, you know, every time it deployed, it would get stuck on something or get lost. Um, and this one's doing doing pretty good. It's not great. Is this one of the uh, ones that connects up to wireless as well? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so I can, I, can, I can use Google Assistant or Alexa to... Ask status and tell it to go and stop. Um, on the app on my phone, I can send it to specific rooms. Um, that part I haven't gotten quite working quite right yet. Um, once the holidays are, you know, all the crappers picked back up and put away, um, I'm going to delete my house and have it remap it again because it's, I send it to one room and it goes to a room on the other end of the house. I suspect that's because it's, the map how do you was feel? Jacked up. How do you feel about someone having a map of the inside of your house? <laughs> <laughs> I remember someone did a did a big teardown. I think it was one of the the Chinese brand ones, like the um, Xiaomi ones, that would actually like use the laser mapping and everything. And there would be a map of the the inside of the the property that was then stored in the cloud, and that's how it like it would send all that data up that point cloud data. It's uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it doesn't bother me too much. Um, so the know, police know where I... to go when they knock the door down. <laughs> it's a... well, I mean, all it, all it knows is the floor plan, right? It doesn't know what you're doing yeah, in yeah. those rooms. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, yeah, you know, but you know, in my, you know, in my, well, I guess I shouldn't say that because people can find where I live um, <laughs> fairly easily. Um, <laughs> It's just this point cloud data of Mike standing over angrily naked, like, what are you doing, robot? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I've, those vacuums make me think of, you know, kind of like Internet of Things and all these little gadgets that are supposed to make our lives better. Have any of those actually made a meaningful impact for you guys that it's like nice or can be, the closest thing I can think of is like an air fryer. Like we like our air fryer. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Like this, I don't know, man. Just like all those gadgets that are supposed to be cool and helpful, just seem to like not appeal to me or suck. I have a lot yeah. of the light style ones. So the the ones that make the most difference to me are the smart smart switches and stuff. So I turn off the heaters and things at like one o'clock in the morning if we haven't if we've forgotten to turn them off. Same when it's in winter, um, the electric blanket automatically goes off at a certain time if we forget to turn it off. So preventing the house from burning down, like. Um, as well as like lights in the hallway and stuff. So I've got a couple of the sensors and if you're walking up the stairs, the lights automatically come on, they go off after three minutes. Like those ones to me are convenient because it's something that I don't have to do. Same in our, in our bedroom, we've actually got a string of lights wrapped around the, the headboard. So like a dim light that you can turn on after you've, or like when you're turning off the big lights, I, I quite like those sort of ones and it. They're relatively inexpensive and they're convenient. I don't have to sort of fumble around in the dark to find a switch or it's, yeah, I like those ones. Hmm. Most of it's relegated to turning lights on and off though, isn't it? 
Yeah, like for, like for the stuff that I can do in a rental property here. Um, if it was uh, my own place, then I'd probably have other stuff installed as well, like the front Century door locks and, and yeah, <laughs> those little Nerf ones, like <laughs> uh, <laughs> catapults that launch your felines at intruders. I get it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just, uh, the sliding like, door releases this... the cats. <laughs> <laughs> is this uh, is this is this drastically improving your life, Mike? Does any technology really? I mean, other than I guess a smartphone. I guess you could think of that as like a IoT sort of thing. And then just... Christy likes playing with her watch. But... It um, so um, I thought that they were really stupid for a long time, um, but uh, my Nest thermostat, um. I like because I no longer have to remember to put it into air conditioning mode or heat mode. It just, you just set the temperature and it just does whatever it has to do to make that happen. Um, it's a, you know, high and low range, um, which is nice in like the spring and fall when it's, you know, 80 degrees Fahrenheit for Andrew. That's quite hot in Celsius. <laughs> Um, during the day, but then it's, you know, the next day is 40 and it's just like, you know, having a flip back and forth. No, Nest just takes care of it. Um, and we got some other temperature probe sensors in the house since there's can be a five, six degree variance in the house. And so like I have it set to worry about the temperature in the bedroom at night because that's where we are. I don't care what it is in the rest of the house. Just do what you have to do to make the bedroom comfortable. Um, you know, same in the living room. I set that to be the evening hours. And so it's nice that that, you know, that kind of balances all that out. Um, and I haven't, thankfully, I haven't had a, a function little test of this other uh, kind of attachment. But the, uh, but the Nest um, smoke detectors... Um, they will turn off the furnace if they detect smoke or carbon monoxide or any of those things. It just it just kills it entirely so that it's not blowing smoke in the rest of the house and not feeding oxygen to wherever a fire might be. Uh, I hope to I not just need to use those, but it's nice to know I completely to forgot. Do it. I actually have one of the Nest doorbell cameras, which has just become a seamless part of my life now. So I didn't even think of it as a smart device. Like it, the amount of times though, where we've been sort of two minutes down the road or something and someone's knocked on the door to deliver a parcel and you get the notification, you're able to be like, okay, just leave it there. We're just around the corner. Um, or just like up the shops or something. And I've sort of run back. That's yeah. I guess that, that to me is the, it's smart home technology. It integrates. I don't have to think much more about it. And because it's just there, it's it's helpful. Yeah. I love it now. Yeah. Gone are the days that we have to worry about that stuff because uh, people are just basically like delivery ninjas. Like food will arrive and Christy will get like a bloop on her phone. It's like, oh, it's sitting on the porch. Okay. Or yeah. we'll get Amazon notifications. Hey, your package is on the porch. Oh, okay. We'll yeah. get it. Don't have to like ever do anything anymore. It just magically appears. Like, and when you were a kid, you had to like reverse. go get money from the store and then like go get money from the bank and then call someone up on the phone and <laughs> believe it or not there's still a lot of people that uh refuse to use banks over here so it's a fairly common practice They'll cash their checks and then they will carry like wads of money around with them which is bizarre to me still yeah because yeah. my my uh father-in-law is like that it's how he uh that's how he rolls one of those big like back-breaking wallets he just Jeez. Yeah, well, it's George Costanza wallet. But I guess you know, there's there's some um, there's some logic to it, right? Because you see your bank account right there in your pocket, right? You don't you don't have to guess how much you got left or whatever. Um, but even having said that, they're always broke. So it's like it, it's like it's really it's not operating in that capacity. It's just you know theoretically. You can see how broke I am on my phone. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't have to like open it up and moths fly out. <laughs> no, but uh no, but after that i'd say you know the you know should the should the robot vacuum improve itself it'll be nice uh if nothing else it will force us to not leave clutter around the house mm. not leave clutter on the floor at least <laughs> no one yeah, tries yeah. to eat usb cables 
<laughs> yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, to make sure that it does its job, you can't leave just crap laying around on the floor. So it, uh, you know, at least will inspire us to do the things that we should have already been doing to some degree. Mm. Pivoting a little on that, has anyone has anyone played with much of the Lorawan stuff for senses and tracking and things like that? I haven't done any of it. Have you? I've got a couple of the, the MicroTik devices for picking up signals, and it's sort of interesting, the, the data that I see come through. Some of it's encrypted, some of it's just open. Um, but I don't have any of the sensors yet, and I kind of want to build build a couple little things as like side projects just to monitor when the bins are emptied and monitor when there's mail in the mailbox and things like that. So that would be cool remember, to do. I remember when Microtech announced the LoRaWAN uh, access points, or I'm not sure what the nomenclature is as far as LoRaWAN goes, but like, you know, kind of the AP side of things. So I started looking yeah. at, you know, hey, I, could I just pick up a few sensors and start playing with this stuff? And I didn't, I mean, there, Google didn't really come up with a lot of stuff. And the stuff it did come up with was really absorbently expensive. It seemed to be really geared towards like petroleum industry or like heavy industrial, like people, you know, that have to have like bulletproof monitoring of stuff. And so yeah. the price was also bulletproof associated with that. And I was like, man, that's just, you know, for somebody who just wants to play with it, it seems kind of absorbing it. But there, I mean, I did see some like kind of roll your own DIY stuff too, but. I don't know. And then my attention span fell off and I just moved on to something else. There's, um, there's, there's a fair few things available now that are sort of on the lower end. Like, um, uh, for example, there's a, there's a website I go to here in Australia called iot-store.com.au. Um, and they have things like sort of base price, uh, LoRaWAN wireless door slash window sensor. It's just one of those read switch sensors, but it's got a, a battery and everything in it um, for like 35 bucks. Um, I'm pretty like sure this one has a battery. Right. Thirty-five bucks. That's not bad. And the idea is that the battery in them lasts for a year, so like they they just sit there for the most part and only transmit when something changes. And, and it's one of those little distance, like coin right? cell. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. Like with the dis with the even with the small devices, if you have a, an antenna a kilometer away or something, like you can you can pick those up. Obviously, if you're talking like some sort of garage three levels down or whatever that's not going to work as well but if you're talking about a house or something one one gateway should cover your whole house and everything within uh, easily like a few hundred feet um, rather than using meters sorry i was like gotta say a few hundred meters but <laughs> you guys get it yeah for sure uh -huh. yeah i um have you ever played with node red at all um, the name rings a bell. Um, yeah, I poked around with that a little bit to do some automation stuff before. It's like you can kind of build workflows, like graphically and things like that. And uh, I remember it had some LoRaWAN plugins or whatever. I just, I don't know. I didn't, I you know, sometimes I'll just dip my toe in just for a second, then I'll jump back out of the pool because it was just too chilly. You know, it wasn't, wasn't the right temperature for me yet. There is a, uh, there's another one I've seen before that's actually quite good. Um, cause there used to be, um, uh, there used to be another, another system was like, uh, if this, then that, that was really good at sort of plugging things together. Um, and I think that's, I think that's closed down or they've just blocked it off from Google or something now. So it's, it's hard to pull all those things together. Hmm. Um, I'll have to have to go find it and, and come back to you in a little bit. But there's a there's another service that's actually really good for that sort of stuff as well. So. Interesting. If ta 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 ta. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I uh, I remember poking around with that just a little bit, but I didn't get too far. I know the Node Red is kind of like that on steroids, and you can do uh, really easy dashboards and information visualization with it and things like that. You know, all the things you're collecting whatever it happens to be from because i know it'll also do what's that called like um mosquito mqqt or something like that mqt something like that yeah the the handle of all of those ah here yeah. it is integromat integromat is one of the ones i've seen recently that's good for writing those sort of things um so you can basically tie in email or push notifications with your sensor systems or you can even have it like query websites and things like that. So if you wanted to query a certain API, 
Um, I know a friend of mine, uh, I'm not going to say any names here, uh, but really <laughs> loves his Red Bull. And he automatically queries a couple of the local stores to find out when the price drops below a certain amount and <laughs> sends him a notification so he can buy more. <laughs> That's clever. I've been on a hunt for um, Japanese and Korean sodas. So I need to set up some similar system. It's getting pretty sparse over here. We're closing our borders down to the one thing that's most important to me, which is carbonated beverages from overseas. It's getting tough. Times are tough. Well, listeners that are overseas here. that know how to get Greg some of these things, just uh, reach out. <laughs> you know what my favorite is? It's this Korean grape soda. It's a Chupa Chups grape flavor. You know, like the lollipops or suckers yeah. or whatever. Any everybody calls it something. We call them. Different. We call them Chupa Chups. Chupa Chups. You know what I found out? In the UK, it's not the hokey pokey. They call it the oaky cokey. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Man, kids are weird. They're and silly sprinkles people. are hundreds and thousands. And oh yeah, we yeah we call them hundreds and thousands. What's that? What's that? Um, golly, it's fairy like, bread. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you put like butter on white bread, and then you put hundreds yeah. and thousands on top of it's it. Like white it's trash toast is bread. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Well, let me um, let me move on to something that's kind of uh, cerebral because it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't exist right now. But it's, and I'm going to read an excerpt from it. So I was I was trolling the Nanog list, like the mailing list, for a little bit of information. And I'm going to read you a little excerpt of what I found. And they were talking about how the House on Monday and the Senate on Friday have overridden the President's veto on the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2021, passing it into law. And so they're basically saying there's this emergency alert system. It's called uh, Reliable Emergency Alert Distribution Improvement Act, Ready, uh, has been, I guess, approved for talks or study. And they're saying not later than 180 days after the date of enactment, this act provides the public notice and opportunity for commencement. The commission shall complete an inquiry and examine the feasibility of updating the emergency alert system to enable or improve alerts to consumers provided through the internet, including through streaming services. So traditionally every kid, you know, that grew up in the eighties would occasionally, uh, you know, poop their pants because the emergency warning system would come on television, you know, it was just like, beep, just really loud and said, this was a test of the emergency. Well, I have to say that because my kids, I don't think have ever watched actual television to see that. Right? Everything, everything comes over the internet. Just, Streaming. You so have that to watch being... it and you can't pause or like fast forward. What is this? <laughs> no. I'm like, were no, you poor, like, Dad? <laughs> it picks up on your VCR and everything. Um, so that idea we used being, to get Netflix in the mail. Which, I mean, if you if you if you look at it through that lens, nobody. I can't say nobody. People are increasingly switching from watching traditional systems that would actually have the emergency alert stuff, right? Or it would. Uh, they still do it on the radio. Like if you're. But yeah. again, nobody's really listening to the radio. Anymore. When was the last time? You, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Other well, than that, you're in the car and for some reason your Bluetooth isn't working. Like, Even then, I'll just put it on speaker <laughs> on my phone and uh, put it in my, uh, like, right next to me or put it in my cup holder uh, if I'm desperate. <laughs> but, I mean, it's an interesting concept, right? Because I haven't actually had, like, a standard TV service in a million years. So, you know, if it was a major streaming service. What would that be like Hulu? Maybe what if YouTube, could you conceivably, if there's a disaster or some imminent danger in your area, all of a sudden, you know, splashed across your YouTube stream is some emergency alert, right? So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, one in concept, I think it's interesting, but two, how, oh, how would they implement execution of this? And then how would you do that in a secure way? Because it seems yeah, like how you would do it have without to... breaking any security and stuff, and somehow just, oh, I guess if you've got the support of, be of something Netflix open. and all of those, yeah, yeah, it's got to be something that's open that people can access, right? They have to be able to push those alerts to it. So how do you keep that from getting compromised? <laughs> well, in previous conversations on this topic um, on Nanog, uh, it seemed like kind of the at least the most well thought out position would be that it's handled at the uh, OS layer, not the application layer. So Netflix wouldn't do it, but 
Amazon with the Fire Stick or Roku or Samsung TV, they would be the ones that handled it because then it's it's only one person. Then the Windows, then Windows, Apple, anyone else? Like, do they have to include it? Uh, the the previous conversations I was seeing were just about consumer electronics type stuff. So, like mm. like an Xbox or a PlayStation, perhaps. Um, but, um, um, you know, I don't obviously know what the, what the, uh, NDAA is focusing on, but, um, you know, getting it built into every single app would be a nightmare. Um, so just, you know, there's only five, 10 different, you know, operating systems that have mass distribution. So just mm-hmm. put it in those. Well, the the subsection E says Internet and Online Streaming Service Emergency Alert Examination. So to me, that doesn't necessarily cons- say consumer device. To me, just, you know, like, I mean, it's pretty broad. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they they made it broad for a reason, right, to foster thought and conversation there, but. That I mean, that's that's crazy to think that you would have some kind of a backdoor in every Windows machine to where people could push content on there. Because yeah. how long does it take before that gets compromised? Just ask someone. Well, and, and what's the requirement yeah. to to leave it active? Like, is it uh, if you're deploying a fleet of laptops for for school kids or something like, and you turn that off, are you then liable for for them not getting the alerts? Like, what's the it's essentially, as you said, it's a it's it's a security hole of, of sorts. So, if you're running a server, presumably you're going to shut all that down because your server doesn't necessarily need to have internet access. So, what's the what's the cutoff to say who should have this presented and who shouldn't? Well, it used to be it used to be put upon all of the major television channels that they had to subscribe to the system and have that capability. So maybe you just look at the top. You know, because we're talking about the United States, right, on this. So just look at the top 20 distribution services for streaming content. That would probably cover, what, like 98% of what people are going to be actively. You know, I mean, you you got YouTube, yeah. Netflix, Hulu, Twitch, what, Venmo? Doesn't YouTube own Venmo? I, I think it's just, PayPal. Yeah. Just thinking, how would that work with like live streams and everything as well? Like you're doing a live stream and all of a sudden it just interrupts the live stream? Yeah. I mean, that's the way it used to work on television. Yeah. It was just all of a sudden you hear a tone and then there's a message, whatever it happens to be. <laughs> yeah, a, well, and then, you know, I think you can see kind of how, how it would, you know, how its impact would be on, yeah, on what they're using now, whether it's on television or on radio or on smartphones yeah. now, the, you know, Amber Alerts and all those other th- things that pop up. Uh, Presumably, you, well, you've also got to work out where people are because it's not just across the country. It's specific areas, right? Yeah. 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 And that's, um, there's a lot of criticisms about the existing systems that they use for that, you know. So, um, you know, on the end of somebody was commenting about how, how there's a, uh, you know, so in the U.S. now we have a variety of different services that do this for emergencies of different kinds. Uh, one of them is child abductions and things like that, and they'll get alerted to you know you know make model license plate vehicle color mm-hmm. f- for some child abduction that was seven hundred miles away. It's like okay, well, mm-hmm. what what good does that do me? I'm I don't see anybody that's in my own town, much less seven hundred miles <laughs> away. Um, I've been at home for four weeks now. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be one of fifty vehicles that's on the road right now because yeah. I mean, we're all in quarantine. We're all locked down, right? It, um, but I mean, so that's you know, a lot of the, of the of the thoughts and criticisms about how it could be kind of apply to the system they already have. So it's like, well, you know, do you give them? more venues to do their same screwing up and that's what's going to happen well, i don't know it just also makes me wonder who has access to push those emergency alerts like are you going to allow it like in a single town like somebody to actually be able to do that because i don't think we have the capability now right 
Yeah, I'm just picturing like two years ago, if that had have existed, you, you would have been seeing all Donald Trump's tweets coming through it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, um, uh, well, uh, in, um, in California, uh, on analog, I was hearing about on California that, you know, those same existing systems are being used somewhat abusively in that they're, they are sending COVID related messages, but not like, you know, you know, going into stage three quarantine or not, you know, this, this new thing has happened. No, it's like, I guess in that jurisdiction, they're talking about, you know, they, they had a report of a party that they shut down. It's just like, why does everybody have to know about that on an emergency basis? Mm. Like, yeah. like nobody pointless. cares. Other than people that see... are at the party are now pissed off. Yeah, like fire information, you know, wildfire or earthquake or something like that, or, you know, some natural disaster, tornado warnings. I mean, junk like that, it totally makes sense to me. But, yeah, that seems like uh, kind of a waste of every. Well, you know what I mean? It makes, hmm, like you were talking about the Amber Alert from something that's like 500 miles away, it makes you callous of those things. So you just like, okay, go away, go away, go away, and you don't even look at it, you know, you just kind of yeah. get numb to that stuff. <laughs> But it makes the person who did it feel important. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, like the guy who sent out the accidental alert to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a problem. Eh, it just depends. Made for an exciting day, I think. A good time had by all. All right, so let's see what else that I have. Some more doom and gloom information so it was uh, I think Christmas Day there was an explosion in Nashville near an AT&T telco pop I'm not sure the size of the pop but what I found interesting is they were saying that it took out telephone service not only for Nashville but a lot of Tennessee people were talking about how it went to Kentucky Alabama I mean that was pretty damn widespread I just thought that was yeah. crazy. Do you think it's because those states are so kind of uh, rural-ish and just um, less connected? Well, and so uh, other areas affected also include Indiana. Um, I got a report from a WISP uh, that w that was needed to get service activated to some large location immediately because their AT&T provided protected circuit was down due to the Nashville explosion. It's like they're they're in Indiana. That's two states away. Where was the protected circuit going? Was it just in Indiana? I mean, it couldn't have been, right? Um, Must have been cutting I, through there, huh? I don't I'd know. Be having some serious conversations about my protection if it was both via one data center. It, uh, well, that seems to happen more often than one would like. Um, but the... I think the big source of, the, of these sorts of outages is that And then it's kind of been, been reinforced by watching some of the people that have worked at these large telcos uh, in some Facebook groups that I'm in. Like, their method of making, of increasing uptime is like, let's just make this structure bigger and stronger. You know, let's, let's, let's put the conduits in concrete. You know, it's about, you know, how can we spend more money to make this one thing just an absolute rock? And doing so, then, you know, there's only a limited amount of dollars that can be spent. So then they have less rocks, you know. So sort of like, you know, one of my long time complaints is that lots of carriers build, you know, they will haul you first a very long distance back to some gigantic piece of routing iron. Um because they spent millions of dollars to buy this, you know, full rack, you know, huge CRS or huge its existence. Yeah, like you know, this, this enormous router. It's now they have to bring everything to it to to pay for it. Instead of putting ASRs in more places, they put a couple of CSRs out. Yeah. And so well, then, I mean, the more redundancy you have, the more technical. I mean, technically, the more things you have to maintain, and you know that that's. 
uh, more truck rolls you have to do. It's just, I don't know, they probably want to consolidate that stuff. But I was also thinking about, um, I think a lot of carriers plan for failover. Like, back, you know, when you're talking about a protected route, it's the idea that if I fail on one leg, I've got the backup. Um, and I bet they account for so much failover simultaneously. But when you have such a major location like that go out, I think all bets are off, right? Like the, the backup capacity they had planned for, like, that planning just kind of goes away. They weren't expecting, you know, probably some Everything major to fail over. just completely disappear. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, I mean, it's like, uh, I played the data center game for a while and it was always this, um, how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Right? Like I can make this thing equally redundant and then I can go down and make that thing and then that thing. And then at some point there's diminishing returns. You're just spending more money and, you know, you're covering these really small fractional, off chance things and so you just you know it's everything's a gamble nine point, what was it five nines you aim for six nines yeah yeah or you know you guarantee 100 percent to people because you're a crazy person but you know it's you know, 100 percent rebates is it <laughs> you got to mail them in we send you coupons and then you got to mail them back into us in a certain amount of time obviously in duplicate but yeah i mean that so that i, I was thinking that's probably part of it um it being as widespread as it was, it was probably such a major point that they just didn't have capacity planned uh, for all of that. I did see some people saying in the list that uh, at and has a disaster response team that's like second to none and that those guys kind of uh, all converged and I guess got services back up well before you would anticipate anybody being able to. So that's, I mean, I guess that's cool. But, <laughs> well, yeah, it's up. Yeah, it's up. And the the uh, the restoration time to the services that weren't in the immediate, you know, middle Tennessee area, um, were fairly reasonable. But those are the ones that shouldn't have gone down in the first place. <laughs> so it's like, well, yes, you did get the you know you know central Alabama cell towers did come back on pretty quickly, but they shouldn't have been down. So it's like, well, you know, yeah. here's a cookie, but it's it's a six month old cookie that's been <laughs> left out on the counter and it's, it's hard. It's a good and... test for them as well to see what actually did get taken down and what came back up automatically, what needed manual workarounds, and yeah, maybe maybe everyone's learnt something from this as well as to how to prepare in future. Like, yes, this sort of thing is not anticipated to happen, but if it does, here's best case like. Um, best practice to ensure that yeah. if we need to cut all these circuits over somewhere else, it's sort of easier for people to do so. Yeah. And I mean, being in that boat before humans can only think of so many things, right? You can only come up with so many scenarios and, um, things are always going to fail in new and unexpected ways. And you just have to be there and be ready for it. So, uh, silver linings, right? Get everything out of it that you can and try and be better the next go around. But I mean, yep. I don't think too many people are planning uh, for an RV to explode in front of their building. Yeah, because you just don't know what's going to happen when something like that goes on. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's um one thing um, from those lists. Um, you know, they were talking about oh, you know, all this, you know, all this you know, uptime and, and, you know, dedication to, to building a resilient operation. And maybe it's, you know, maybe it varies by region, but, um, you know, somebody was like, oh, well, you know, I'd like to see some, you know, some IP data center take this sort of attack. Oh, like um, a carrier yeah, neutral facility? Right, yeah, because it's, it's still the old, you know, you know, TDM telco stuff versus data. Like that's, that's the mentality of these guys. Oh, you, you know, all this data stuff, it doesn't work. It doesn't do this. It doesn't do that. And I'm like, you know, I'm just thinking almost every data center that I've gone to, um, has been, I mean, there are multiple upon multiple entrances and, you know, some carriers will enter a major data center in four or five different vaults. Um, and there's the most extreme amount of diversity, you know, going up 
this elevator shaft, but, you know, not this one because the other, you know, entrance is already in it and just on and on and on. Meanwhile, most of the COs, granted they are smaller COs, most of the COs that I've worked with uh, for telcos, everything is in a single entrance. They're, you know, their own fiber comes in and out the same entrance. All their copper comes in one entrance. You know, there's only one power feed entrance. So it's like, well, you know, I don't, I don't know that, you know, I think I'd rather be in a data center that had diverse power feeds and diverse generators and diverse data connections. Mm. Most data centers actually this. do have a single power feed coming in, or if they have redundant ones, it's coming from the same company. They'll just, uh, it'll just be kind of diverse paths off of maybe even sometimes the same substation. Uh, not always the same substation. Sometimes it's a different one, but it's usually a manual swap on the carrier side or on the power provider side. So that's kind of out of your control. So while utility may go away, usually the utility company is going to be, I'm not going to say Johnny on the spot, but pretty reactive on switching the power over for those major data centers. So I see that. <laughs> yeah, to... <laughs> yeah, but like. Like on like you know on like the central offices that I've been to, it's like there's just one transformer bank on yep. one utility pole. That like there is no opportunity for anything else other than you know down the road. Yeah. Um, Not only that, you know, I've seen some of those that have like their generators in the basement, which is fun too. <laughs> yet, um, yet um, I think uh, New York City learned that lesson a few years ago. But I mean, it's floods, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like, what are you going to, I mean, especially like some place like New York, if you don't have space to put a generator, I mean, what else are you going to do? You got to, I mean, I guess the basement's better than nothing. So go for it. Cross your fingers, put it on, um, put it on little water wings. So it'll float case. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, bump it around. It, uh, um, it would then there's also like uh, some of the other uh, we're hearing about on you know on Nanog um, not just this AT and T one but there's various other major outages for like super important systems and it's like you know you know AT and T or CenturyLink or whoever is the sole holder of the contract okay well you know good luck on your redundancy because you're not going to have any like you put all your money or you know, all your eggs into one basket um and it's up you know and half the time they don't give you all the details you need on the basket um you know some you know you don't have complete immunity by going to multiple carriers but usually it's pretty pretty solid that um you know even if it's like, even if you're just going with incumbents, if you buy a service from an incumbent telco and an incumbent cable company, they're not going to have the same infrastructure anywhere. They are completely separate everywhere. Um, but they yeah. don't even do that. Because if you're, if you're getting, like, DIA from a single provider, even if they're coming from someplace else regionally, usually, like, when there's a big outage... Like in a carrier, it is a regional outage, so it's going to like affect all of Texas or all of California. So even if you know if you're one provider, you're probably going to have a bad time. Whereas I guess I mean that does make a little bit more sense if you have multiple carriers. But what happens when, say, Google has a bad day? You know, it doesn't matter who the carrier is because they're all probably picking them up out of the same data center in your state, or maybe one of two, or maybe they're getting them in a couple of places. But yeah, it's usually going to it's going to spell uh, frustration all the way around, no matter who you're getting it from. Wah, wah, wah. Well, you ready to do some complaining, Mike? I see some, uh, some stuff on here for you. Sure. I could, uh, I could definitely complain. Uh, all right. What is, uh, what is Avalara? I don't, I don't know who or what they are. Um, Avalara is a tax engine. Um, a lot of types of businesses go to Avalara to ensure that they're doing the proper taxation. Um, and 
Yeah, they have APIs that are referred to by various systems. Um, and my specific complaint uh, would center on their telco engine, obviously. Um, so we're working to get them set up on our sonar installation. And I say working on, it's been a long process. Um, I'll say I was committed to it. It wouldn't take nearly as long, but because it's such a pain in the butt, it takes a long time. And um, it's it's so difficult to work. Okay, so obviously taxes are and regulation reporting is a very complicated subject. Um, and they um, um, they're supposed to solve it all for you, except they just give you a table full of obscure tax types. They have no real bearing to the service. And you're supposed to figure out which ones apply to each one of your services. And it's not just, uh, well, is it option A or option B? It very well could be option A, B, F, Q, R, and Z. And you have a conversation with them, and they will tell you, yep, that's a good one, that's a good one, that's a good one, that's a good one. So I asked them. Why don't you just pre-bundle these for me? You just pre-bundle, you know, here is, inter you know, you do this for internet. You do this for, for in-state data transport. This for out-of-state data transport. This for local dial tone. Just give me the preset groupings. Well, no, we can't do that. Why can't you do that? If I tell you the service, you tell me what numbers to choose. So why don't you just make it an option that I can click on and then avoid the conversation. Well, we don't know if you have something special. A dial tone is a dial tone. An internet's an internet. Like it's, there. I'm not saying there's not special cases, but why don't you make it a default? Well, and I think some of that stuff uh, adjusts state by state, right? Like, so Texas has that weird. The first twenty dollars isn't taxable on the internet and stuff like that. And also, um, I was thinking, what happens if uh, that change now? Uh, I, I don't removed know. That entirely now. Oh, wicked! Well, uh, have yes, they it. have. Uh, <laughs> I guess the the U.S. did uh, end all of that grandfathering. Uh, I forget when it went into effect, whether it has already happened or not. Um, yeah, I'm afraid I know about weird U.S. tax law. <laughs> I was going to say, you probably know better than us having to deal with that stuff so frequently. I would, I would probably recommend, uh, having touched it as well, um, taxjar.com. Um, we, I had had some pretty good experiences working with, with those guys for much the same thing as you're talking about, Mike. Um, putting in where you're selling from, where you're selling to, what the product type is you're selling, and getting it to spit back out what you're what your taxes should be. I found that was yeah, <laughs> that, someone who that, had no uh, idea, like it had a lot of the explanations and there was an API and everything. So you could plug in whatever information you, you had. It's nice. Regular. So, you just query it. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, um, um, yeah. I'll have to look into that. I mean, Avalar is what's supported by Sonar. So I'll be somewhat limited, but it, it'd be nice to check out the competition to see how they're doing it and change my complaint but it's just like <laughs> but what well, they're no like importing if stuff list gets so stolen what do they need you like, for it um uh, but like on the thing about well you know in texas you, you know in texas do you have this different tax thing yes but that's not how that applies because once i choose internet or like you know once i have the the right set of tax bundles and things then it tells me what's appropriate in the jurisdiction so, you know, if I had an internet service and I gave it, you know, just as for argument's sake, let's, you know, rewind five years. You know, I gave it your address and a dollar amount and whatever. It would spit back. Yes. And, you know, here it is. And you owe this much in tax and so on and so on. I gave it my address. Illinois never had internet tax. It would say zero dollars. Move on. Yeah. So, like, so like it does all that on a per transaction, per invoice basis. But then they won't just, there's no easy button for setting it up. It's like you have to already know what how their system is built to know how it would respond to stuff. Hmm. But they won't just give you a template. It's just so aggravating. 
And I talked to them about it, and they're like, well, you know, we can't really do that, because it's like, you'll tell me in a conversation on the phone, but you won't just give me a list? Well, no, we can't so do that. So what you need is a mechanical Turk plugin. But you you a call the API, pad. that calls a human, a human calls another human, they get the answer back, <laughs> and they return it to you via an API. <laughs> it, uh... Yeah, it, um... And so that's that's that. I'll check out those guys that Andrew talked about just to kind of see what what you know what the other side of the fence is like. Even though I'm kind of boxed into what I have, but um, right. how about ordering circuits? What's that all about? Um, this is kind of somewhat related to the AT and T telco conversation. Um, not that it, I mean it's nothing to do with that particular event, but the design and build of networks. Um, I'm trying to get a diverse circuit from one of our towns that goes down to St. Louis, but does not go through Chicago. The problem being is that almost everybody in the area, they're going to take you to Chicago. You know, you know, you know, they may have a ring, but the ring on both sides collapses into Chicago. Um... And it's just, just why? Why not? I mean, what's wrong with that? As long as uh, the fiber path is diverse from what the other carrier is, what's wrong with that? See, well, then, because uh, once you get downtown, things get real commingled and real messy real quick. Mm. Um, and given that I'm north technically of downtown Chicago uh, and St. Louis would be, you know, way far South. If I was, th there is no good. W well, there are few good ways of getting there without piecing together a variety of dark fiber circuits. I mean, it can be done with a variety of dark fiber circuits or uh, Zayo can get me there via Minneapolis. So I think like Minneapolis to Omaha down to, Little Rock, Arkansas, back around, and then I get to St. Louis. It's like, good God, that's <laughs> that's a hell of a route just to avoid Chicago. Um, so I don't know. I may be buying a bunch of dark fiber just so I can do this. Because this is a situation where I have to have complete redundancy. Uh, circling back to the 911 conversation from the last show. Um, is I'm trying to maintain diversity to two far away areas. Um, it's getting complicated. And carriers suck. I believe in you. You can make it happen. So that's All it. All right. Yeah, that's not too bad. Well, I was curious. It's the uh, the beginning of the new year. Everybody does resolutions, or I guess most people do resolutions. I was curious if you guys do. I will start out and say that I don't do resolutions. <laughs> Having just said all that stuff, uh, I feel like it's a waste of time for me because if I want to do something, I usually just do it. Uh, the new year oftentimes brings me a little bit of additional energy. I wonder if that's because I always take some time off. And so I just, I don't know, I feel a little bit more pep in my step right off the bat. But for me, I am starting uh, a new podcast that's completely non-technical. Uh, it's about people that do interesting things or have done interesting things where they are and then tracing that back to what was the what was the moment you knew you were going to, you know, I was like, what are the, what are the series of events that led you to that in your life? So just kind of curious about that stuff. It always, it always fascinates me to, to figure out how people ended up where they are. So I've started reaching out to some folks and a uh, surprising number of quasi famous people are saying yes. So uh, that's interesting. <laughs> I think I'm going to do it kind of seasonally instead of trying to do it like this, where it's on a schedule. Cause it would just, I mean, it's hard enough to herd cats, but you know what I mean? These, uh, you want to do it mythical fun. unicorns. It would be hard to, you know what I mean? Like I don't have pull for that stuff. So I was thinking get chunks of them, uh, done and then recorded and then release them on a regular schedule. So that'd be pretty cool. I've got, um, this one guy, Owen Egerton. He's so master pancake theater. He's one of the comedians on that, but he also has directed like several movies and he writes a lot and, uh, he, yeah, he just does like a lot of 
really interesting, somewhat high profile things. And I asked him and he's like, yeah, all right. So that was kind of a trip. And that sort of gave me momentum to start asking all of like, uh, I've started asking all my favorite YouTubers and, uh, <laughs> I've already got some OKs from some of them, which is trippy. So that'll be uh, that'll be cool. So I'm trying to uh, to do that. I think that's more for. I don't know that anybody's gonna listen or care to listen, but man, I think it's gonna be uh, fascinating for me. I think it's gonna feed the little voice inside my head. So I'm really interested. In that I was curious. Do you guys have any resolutions, or are you starting any new things, even if they aren't resolutions? What uh, what's cooking, Andrew? Uh, look, New Year's resolution, 2560 by 1440. <laughs> Sorry, I had to slip that in there. Uh, <laughs> no, for, for me, I had, um, uh, we, we were obviously locked down for most of this year and I was trying to work through some, some health problems and things, like just weird stuff with my body. I was trying to work out what was going on. So I am going to, and this is, this is not normally something I do coming into a new year, I'm not normally the person that's like, I'm going to get fit, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to do all this, but I sat around a lot last year, and I, yeah. I I had a bar cart for my birthday while we were stuck indoors for like three months straight, so... Um, You're going to have to repeat like that, to you had a what? A bar cart that I got for my birthday. Oh, a like bar cart. A cart with okay. all the... like a cart full of alcohol. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I've always been interested in like, doing the mixing and doing like learning how to make drinks and things. So huh? put that to pretty good use. Um, and like, not, <laughs> not, in a, not saying this in a bad way. I, I haven't become an alcoholic during lockdown or anything. I'm. You are already um, an alcoholic. I get it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had addictive personality in other ways. So too many computer games. No, um, no, I'm I'm sort of interested in getting out a bit more again, um, and and getting back to doing sort of a regular regular fitness thing and stretching out. I've I've had some problems with my feet, and my legs, so just trying to exercise and and make those work better, and then maybe going out on some hikes and things as well. So. Mm. When you talk about fitness and body things. It harkens back to a friend of mine that I knew that uh, broke his arm throwing a dodgeball one time. <laughs> huh, yeah, yeah. Can't remember who that was. <laughs> in, in my defense, it's just I threw the ball so hard. It was the, the, the breaking the sound barrier. The shock wave traveled back down my arm. I just wasn't expecting it. So. You, yeah, nobody accounted for that. Uh, it's good that you didn't hit just anybody too with strong. that ball. They wouldn't have survived it, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Well, I know you got um, your valve index got there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you have you put any miles on that? I I have. I, I only got a, a sort of short time to play around with it because I have to take everything downstairs and set it up. And I'm gonna get some of the cables so I can run it down there. And then that's one that's one plan. Is sort of how to keep active and things. Right. Right. Um. But I have. I've. We've had so many people um, sort of staying with us and family visiting and um, still trying to keep a relatively small number of people that we've been in contact with but um, it was just yeah very full on full on socializing after having almost a year of just uh, us and our friend who's been staying with us so it's uh, ready for like a bunch of sleep and just quiet and <laughs> yeah. yeah I I I can't even begin to tell you how ready I am for a vaccine. Like I, I want that Joker bad. So my wife has like a pre-existing condition, obviously. Well, not obviously. People listen to this probably don't know that, but she does. And so we're trying to figure out where she fits into the thing. You know, like obviously first responders and stuff like that here are getting it. Well, it's like she's got that pre-existing condition. She goes, "Yeah, so we can go get our vaccines." And I was like, "What are you talking about? We?" She was like dude, you have a heart condition. And I go, oh, yeah, I've got a hole in my heart. I forgot about that. <laughs> it's those little things. It's like, you know, how I could never be in the military and I have to take antibiotics when I go to the dentist and dumb stuff like this. Like, oh, yeah, because if I get an infection, I could, like, die really fast. I forget about little things like that sometimes. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm pre-existing you know, condition. the important yeah. stuff. <laughs> I was like, well, shit, well, maybe I can, you know, maybe I'll actually be able to get it a little bit sooner than I was expecting to. So uh, I am so excited. I will continue to wear my mask, right? I, even after I get the vaccine, do my part, show support for everybody else. 
Um, but yeah, I. I can't Get a little begin COVID to tattoo. You show how... you made it through twenty twenty. <laughs> I just and I just want to go and sit in a restaurant and eat a meal. I really like it. It's so unfathomable to think about doing that right now. Not to say that there's not a ton of people in Texas already doing that. So I met a guy from Ohio. He moved here in November, like so, just like a month and a half ago or something. And uh, he goes, "Yeah, you, this isn't lockdown." He's like, "Where we were, that was lockdown up there." He's like, "You guys, it's, it's like nothing's even going on down here." I was like, "Yeah, I know. It's for good or for bad. You know, people are just going ham." And I. So many of my family members either are actively have it or have gotten over it right now. It's just crazy, man. Um, so, bonkers. But uh, I think everybody's heard enough about COVID and stuff like that. So, uh, I, I heard a, I heard a great tech the other day. Someone was saying, uh, "Remember, remember back in the past when we go to a bowling alley and stick our fingers in the three holes that like numerous other people had had their hands in, and then we take it out and eat chips with those same hands and just <laughs> challenge God? What a wild time!" Challenge <laughs> God, Yeah, I, uh, I know I haven't had like a cold in forever. I'm, I'm enjoying that. I know that much so far. Uh, this is the first time I think I've seen all of my family members wash their hands simultaneously. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, silver lining, small improvements. I'll take those. But, uh, yeah, I haven't had a stomach virus or the runs for quite a while. Although we are starting to eat Indian food again. So I don't know how long <laughs> my luck's going to hold out on that one. What about you, Mikey? You got any resolutions? No, I don't. It, uh, I have too much going on to worry about making promises I, I won't be able to keep. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, it, something... Uh, Good. <laughs> so, no, but, uh, you know, I am just, you know, you know uh, uh, not really related to New Year's or anything, but, you know, have... we For a while, we were trying to start, you know, being a bit more active. Um, but, you know... Really, since uh, end end of November area, um, you know, Kate and I have been working out uh, a lot more often. That's good. Um, People who say they don't uh, have the time, they just need to find the time because it's important, man. Yep. And so now we wake up at uh, five fifteen in the morning. Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> don't find the time That's that right. early in the morning. Find it somewhere else. That's that's part of the advice there. No, but something, um, I had a phone call from a friend of mine. It's a guy who, uh, I actually met at the Grizzlies, really good guy. Um, he was, I, he, he's been kind of scarce lately. You know, I haven't really been hanging on to him and I know he's had some health problems anyway, man. He unloaded a bunch of stuff on me the other day and he was like, yeah, I just couldn't, I couldn't keep it in anymore, you know? And, uh. You know, I had to tell somebody, you kind of the only person I could come to and talk to. He said, because I have to be tough. I have to be strong. You know, I'm the one that everybody else comes to when they have problems and I fix them. You know, was, <laughs> I guess uh, I guess I'm the, the one person that doesn't do that. So he just had this conversation with me. Um, and it made me think of this YouTube video I saw from Brene Brown. She's this researcher who does a lot of really insightful stuff. But she was doing this one on trust. And I thought it was really apropos and i don't know if any of you guys need to hear it maybe whether you're on the call you're just listening here but um they said uh trust is kind of a two-way street in a lot of different ways and one of the facets they said is you know like uh any of you guys like you ding dongs right here if you guys ask me for anything i'm gonna do it no questions asked you never have to worry about it right because that's i always want to help i always want to be of help i want to be of service and for the people I care about, I'm always going to have time to do that, right? Now, having understanding of that, trust means the opposite is true too. That if it's a friend of yours, you have to be able to go to them if you need that same reciprocation. And most of us are terrified to do that, right? There's some weird thing in our brain that says we can't do that. But you have to know that if they're okay doing that for you, and you're okay. I mean, 
if you're okay doing for that for them, they're okay doing that for you. So if you need something, you just need another human to hear what you're saying or to commiserate, reach out to those people, right? You're not going to be lessons in their opinion. And I think even to the contrary, I think you, to the people that matter, you'll seem even stronger, right? Cause, cause what's stronger than making yourself vulnerable? Um, and, uh, being fearlessly vulnerable. So for any of you guys in the new year, it's been crazy. It's been hard for a lot of us. Um, whether it's health related, whether it's uh, financial, whether it's job, I know a lot of people that have lost their jobs and man, it feels pretty bleak. Um, find somebody that you have that trust relationship with and test them because you'll probably be surprised at how well they pass it. So give them a chance. So do you guys have anything, uh, to set on top of that or to, to wrap up any thoughts or opinions? Andrew, we haven't talked to you for a really long time. Is there anything burning a hole in your pocket yeah. you need to tell us about? Um, no, I, I, I just wanted to, to add to what you said. Um, sometimes you, you may feel you, you can't speak to, to friends or family or, or you sort of don't feel like it's something that you can talk about, then therapy is not, not a bad word. Like you can, there are professionals that you can go speak to who, who will talk to you in confidence, who will mm -hmm. go through things with you. Like I uh, ha have a little confession to make us. I, I remember when we sort of were first coming out of our, our big lockdown here and I remember going out to the shops one day and it was like one of the first days we'd been out and there was just people all around and I have uh, I've never experienced that sort of, uh, like I, I didn't know what it was at the time. I, I've sort of come to realize it was anxiety and, and panic in the middle of just so many people after being inside and away from everyone and being scared of being near people for so long. And that's, that's something that took me a while to sort of, come to terms with. I was like, what, what happened to me? Like what, why, like, I'm not like this. I'm not, I don't react like this. And there's been a lot of stuff going on that you'd not, you, you might not have the facilities to deal with on your own. That's not a problem. You can talk to other people. If you can talk to a friend, that's great. If you've got someone there that that's willing to, then that's fine, but it's not, it's also not a problem to talk to, to professionals about things and, and seek help for that sort of stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, I've had a lot of things broken in me before and still do. And I've never been able to fix them on my own. It always took somebody else or some other resource to actually get me there to, to help. And to your point, um, my oldest right now has started doing some therapy. And when we started talking to some, you know, some therapists around, they said that they've basically been inundated with teenagers right now. That it's just, it is such a, I mean, Jesus, dude, everything's hitting it right now. His freshman year of high school, he's doing it here at home. He hasn't, well, no, he saw another human being for the first time in nine months just the other day. You know what I mean? Like one of his friends. And yeah. um, he also, puberty is beating him up like, you know, Rocky Balboa, right? You know, so it's just, everybody's going through something. And you know, what's funny is he actually feels some guilt because some of his friends, his parents, um, you know, we're here in the South and a lot of them believe that mental health isn't exactly a real thing, you know, that it doesn't exist or depression or any of that stuff. And so some of his friends could really use some counseling a lot more than he could. And, uh, he's getting it and they're not. And so that, that trips me out too. It's almost like survivor's guilt or survivor's something. Survivor's guilt, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's the analogy that I uh, always harken back to on stuff like this. It's when you're in the airplane, you have to put your oxygen mask on first before you can help other people, right? Because you're going to get a hypoxia, you're going to fall over, and then nobody, nobody's okay, right? So if you're so busy saying, I've got to take care of all these other people, well, if you fall over, who's going to take care of them? Absolutely nobody, right? So sometimes you have to just stop and take care of yourself first, you know. <laughs> Although, you know, because they from the they can't replace you, you know. If you don't make yeah. it out, they're not getting another one. So, from a technical or, or or logical viewpoint, I always look at it as like, well, 
your brain is trying to fix problems with your brain. It's like it's like trying to use the debugger on a computer to fix a problem with the debugger. Like it's it's okay to get some outside help there. It's, That's amazing. I've never thought about it like that. So you're saying duct tape on duct tape is not a good solution? <laughs> <laughs> so that's most of what's it's, gotten it's me. Weird. It's like think life. of it. You how do you know there's a problem? Well, you you your brain tells you there's a problem, but what if your brain can't pick up certain problems because there's a problem with it? Like if the check engine light's broken, you can't tell there's a problem with the engine. Yeah. So. yeah. That's that's such a better way. I've always said um, if I was able to fix it on my own, I would have already fixed it. Right? It's like it's pretty much that simple. Like if I knew how or I had the capacity, it would already be done. Because all, everything gives me anxiety. <laughs> like all that stuff gives me anxiety. And it's like I don't want to feel this way. If I was capable of not feeling this way, guess what? I would have ensured that I'm not feeling this way. So. <laughs> I was able to take care of it. So, have you tried not being sad? It doesn't work oh, like that. Oh, yeah. Have you tried to stop bleeding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a crazy time of year. Crazy uh, time for everybody. I know this is a technical podcast and we're diverging from that. And people often yell at me when I do that. But um, I think once a year is okay to, to sort of say that kind of stuff. So there you go. All right. Well, guys. I think this was a pretty decent one. We were kind of light on stuff. It seems like it got quiet over the holiday season. Do you have any uh, anything we need to put out there? Any important information? Any updates? Nothing specific no. I can think of. But yeah, no. No. people want to reach out about anything. Yeah. All right. Let's do the let's do the wrap up then. Andrew Cox, all the way in. You're in Melbourne now, right? Yeah. Did I say that? Yeah, Melbourne. We were Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne. 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 There's no, there's no R in that word. Sorry, Melbourne. No, it's just yeah. we we throw out a bunch of letters along the way. You're so efficient, you Australians. Australians, you throw Australian. out the A and the U as well. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, Andrew Cox. If somebody was interested in hollering at you on the internet or otherwise, how would they go about doing that? Um, probably the best way: admin at microtech-radaros.com. Uh, absolutely no relation to the actual Microtech guys, but they've let me keep the domain long enough. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, Mikey, how would you have folks out on the internet get a hold of you? Uh, Patreon.com forward slash the Brothers Wisp and one of our esteemed patrons or patrons would uh, probably help you better than I. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of me, I am Greg at gregsoul.com, where I very regularly blog. I say that I haven't blogged for the last week and a half, maybe two. I really took off these last two weeks. And you know what's so funny is this is the first time in memory where I didn't have anything to do and I just sat and watched YouTube videos. I didn't feel anxious about anything, you know, because I don't know. Uh, that job change was a, a big life changer for me as well, not just an occupational change. So, I have been just kind of sitting around getting fat, uh, you know, the way things should be. There's a guy, Vice Grip Garage on YouTube. Check him out. He's got some of my favorite sayings now. I'm trying to work him in a common vernacular. Like if he's drinking a soda or a beer, he calls it cold snacks. And then uh, whenever he's going to crank a car, he goes, bring the thunder. And then he tries it. And of course, it never works. So uh, it's, he's hilarious. He's, he's almost Canadian. I think he's way up there up north near Mikey, but uh, he kills me. Anyway. Uh, uh, thank you to uh, Andrew, to Mike, our patrons, patreon.com forward slash brothers list, all of you guys. Uh, it was a great year, I think, for uh, camaraderie, for brothers, for people sharing and helping with information in general. So keep that stuff trucking on the, uh, the Slack. We'd love to see all the rest of you on there. Questions, comments, keep them coming. Um, because if you guys have also a note, if you have any special guests you'd like to see on here, uh, I always have fun talking to new people. So uh, throw their names our way. If you can make an introduction, that's even better because me coming out of the blue doesn't always work. So uh, thank you guys. And make Let me click stop on all these things. Stop on that one. Then I click here. Find it on this one. Then I click stop on this one. Know what you are missing? Ideas and some good comedy given. If you missed the show already, don't worry, you're forgiven.